This is the Real Hustle New Recruits. The Hustlers are back, and this time they've brought in two new faces to help them with their scams. New Recruits Polly and Jazz. They'll join original Hustlers Paul, Jess and Alex. Working together as a team, they'll carry out scams that are more cunning and devious than ever before. On tonight's show, the new Hustlers have a smashing first con. Oh my god, it's all smashed. Jess shows off her lung capacity. And actress Roxanne Pallet goes all bug-eyed. Oh my, oh my god, I'm gonna be sick, I'm gonna be sick. The marks in this show have no idea they're being hustled. They agreed the footage could be shown so that you can avoid falling for the same scams. The hustlers have invited celebrity friends to help them with their scams. They'll be thrown in at the deep end, no training and no practice, just straight in. Today's celebrity guest hustler is a stage and screen actress best known for starring in Emmerdale, Roxanne Pallet. I've no idea what to expect today. I'm just really anxious to get going now because I don't know what's... It's the fear of the unknown, isn't it? I'm not nervous, I'm more apprehensive because I don't know what the task is. Once I know what I'm doing, then I'll, I'll focus on that. But I think I can do this. I'm an actress. So I better bloody be able to do this. So there goes my craft. <laughs> Roxanne has been told to stand outside a tube station and wait for instructions. Hello, you're Roxanne? Yeah. I'm Paul. Hiya. Nice to meet you. you too. Come this way. All right, so today we're going to pull a, a mini heist. We're going to steal some uh, valuable merchandise. But we do need a little help. Obviously, we have you. But we also have a couple of new hustlers on the team. Paul doesn't mean Polly and Jazz. He's talking about these. <laughs> oh my God. Cockroaches. Oh, God. Is that real? Yeah. Is it dead? I hope so. Oh my god. You all right? Yeah. No. Roxanne will need to test her nerve in the smoke. Alex and Jazz are the first up in this scam. Looks like they're dressed for some dirty work. They're not an everyday sight for the mark. If there's a bug infestation, That's it's the first the mark has heard of it. I think there's an outbreak in the area, so... Yeah. Of what? Yeah. Oh, um, various, various uh, insects, we've got cockroaches, we've got... He texts um, his boss for clarification. A lot of people have said they've had mouse droppings. Mouse droppings, you've got... Um, to skip it, sure, oh, yeah, no worries. The um, boss hasn't booked any exterminators either. What's the address here? What's your number here? Yeah, 127 High Road East Bridge. Yeah. 127's what we got, but there's, I saw there's a 127C. Here comes someone who can sort out this confusion. It's Paul, posing as a supervisor from the council. What are we doing? Starting the uh, indication? It's not here. Oh, we're not in the right oh, place. Excuse us, sorry. Oh, Wrong right. address. Oh, How sorry. embarrassing. Wow. No, it's down here. One, two, yeah, it's up here. The infestation oh, must be next door, not in the shop. Yeah. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. Half an hour later, it's time for Roxanne's first big task in the scam. She enters the shop, accompanied by Jess, both posing as shoppers. I told you, Calvin Klein. I've got about three eyelashes just fell on. 
Roxanne looks a little uncomfortable. No wonder, because she's carrying something rather unpleasant in her coat pocket. It's a mobile phone. Earlier on, Jess removed the back and the battery and used the cavity to hide a small insect passenger. It's a dead cockroach. Hello. Hi, yeah. Welcome to you. Hey, yeah, take your load. Yeah, I just saw, hang on, I'm trying to work out which one it was I just saw from the window. The bug is held in place only by Roxanne's gloved hand. Her job here is to plant it inside one of the display cabinets. Are you allowed to get one out and show me? Oh, uh, yes. I don't know which... But she needs to pick her out. moment carefully. Actually, no, hang on. Was it that one? Uh, Roxanne opens the display case. Yeah, so they're not digital, are they? There goes the cockroach. Oh, it was like that, but a little bit different. What else you got? Next, she needs to drop some more cockroaches from a plastic bag. Are they slight? Is there those ones that... Done. Now, to make a scene. Is the one... Oh, my, oh my God! I'm going to be sick. What? I'm going to be sick. What? Look, look on the floor. Look on the floor. <laughs> oh, my God! They're cockroaches! That's vile! If only there were some exterminators nearby. Anything on me. Jess oh has God. spotted some. I'm going to go and tell them. I'm going to get... <laughs> There's one in there. There's one, there's actually one inside. I'm sorry, but I think that's absolutely disgusting. They're just like stood there and they just don't seem to care. I'm going to say it. All right. Roxanne's certainly putting her acting skills to good use. Yeah. You're right. You know, I just need a bit of fresh air because I'm that's just so disgusting. I can't maybe just let those in there. <laughs> You definitely didn't call us in today. No. Council official Paul must now convince the Mark he's dealing with a full-blown infestation. Well, you've got an air conditioning unit here. You see this little pipe we've got up there? Uh, yeah. That's a travel way right there. Uh, the stuff screwed into the walls here, so I'm guessing you've got a cavity back here. I'll, I'll bring him in here. We'll just do a quick cleanse of in here. Take about 15 minutes and then we'll do upstairs. That sound fair enough? Uh, how much is it? It's council, we'll take care of it. The idea of getting this problem dealt with here and now, and for free, seems too good to refuse. The Mark would be mad to turn down Paul's offer of an on-the-spot extermination. Well, look, this is what we'll need to do. I'll get the guys to come in here first. What they'll do is we're going to drop uh, some cloths, we'll put some plastic on top of these units here, and then um, what they'll do is they'll basically smoke this room out and then it will take about 10 minutes for it to clear out with the door open. Sure. But you need to be outside. Yeah, no, I don't have any marks. I don't mind if you stay outside or anything, and I'll be in here monitoring. Let me get them to come in here. Cheers. Paul brings in the professionals. But, uh, but look at this. So what's the... We have three here, one okay. here. I think there's one at the back here, but I can't quite see it. Lucky you're not a food shop. <laughs> All right, we'll get the gear. It's a bug's life. <laughs> it's a bug's life. Yeah, people eat these. So the Mark's going to get the place fumigated. But he's about to have a much bigger problem than a few dead bugs. Paul, ready? Go, go. When hustlers go out, they don't bring money, they bring prop bets. Challenges designed to win or lose a drink. But a proposition bet only has one rule, and that's that the hustler always wins. OK. I think you're better. You're quite competitive. Yeah. Excellent. OK, well, I've got a challenge for you. Obviously, I'm using a balloon in my favourite colour, pink. I'm going to blow the balloon up. OK, so normal balloon. Tighten a little knot. OK, now we're going to take it in turns. Just take this balloon. I want you to balance it on your head, whatever angle you think. And I want you to walk around the table with it balanced on your head without holding onto it. 
Now, before you ask, you can't rub it and get static and make it stick down. And however many times each of you can do it, I'm going to add that up, and I bet I can do more than that. So I bet I can walk around more than all three of you put together. And however many times I can do that, you have your drinks. I'll do it three times, three drinks. Not that I want three drinks, but you get the idea, yeah? yeah. Sounds simple enough. To avoid buying Jess a drink, they have to balance the balloon on their heads and walk as far around the table as possible. Jess is even giving them a big advantage by offering to beat their combined total distance. So who wants to go first? Ladies first. Ladies first, there you go. See how you do. Okay, placing it straight on there. There you go. Oh! So you've got what? An eighth around the table? <laughs> What's going next? Okay, yeah. Going towards you. So you've got short hair, you've got really short, spiky. Let's have a little check. You've not got anything sticky on there. I just wanted to have a little feel, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, that was actually less. So you've got about, well, an eight. I'll give you an eight. Here you go. I'm not worried that it might actually stick on your hair. It might. We'll see what happens. That was all right. You, you got probably more than everyone, but it did fall off more or less straight away. I saw you carry on walking there. Their combined total was rubbish. If we add that up, you got about halfway round, didn't you? So if I can walk around once, then I get two drinks, twice four drinks, and so on and so forth. OK, so I'm going to balance this balloon on my head, but um, I didn't say you couldn't do this. I'm going to pop it first. So this is the same balloon. You agree, yeah? Yeah. That's the same balloon. Popped it on my head. <laughs> I'm not touching it, am I? So round I go. I think you get the idea, don't you? <laughs> so that's two drinks. I tell you what, I'll go around another time so we've got four. And then we've all got a drink then, haven't we? Another prop bet, another round of free drinks. It's a sunny day in a bustling city centre. The perfect place for new recruit Polly to hone her hustling skills. In the box drop. It looks like Polly is moving in and she's looking for someone to help her get those removal boxes off the pavement and into her apartment building. On a busy day like this, she doesn't have to wait long. Right behind mark number one is another new hustler, Jazz. Together, they plan to get the mark to pick up one of these boxes and then drop it. But if you find the right mark, they'll help you, but they have to pick up the box in a very particular way. They have to pick it up at the sides because it's only going to be taped, a little bit of tape on the side. So as soon as they pick it up, after about five seconds, it'll fall. I like it. We've got something that's expensive. There's a laptop. Now that's worth a couple hundred quid. Yeah. Okay. But we also have one that's broken. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, could you do me a favour? Yeah. Um, I'm just moving into the flat. Could you help as well, actually? I just need to bring them into the For the thing. scam to work, the Mark must pick up a box from the side nearest the door. That way, he won't see that the middle box is only held together by a tiny sliver of packing tape. But the Mark instinctively goes to the wrong side and, spotting the opening, picks the box up from the bottom. The Mark goes about his business, leaving the new hustlers empty-handed. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much. Will the hustlers look change with Mark number two? Excuse me, you can do me a massive favour, could you? Literally, I've just moved in up there. I just need to get these boxes to the lift. Uh -huh. um, could you help me as well? Sorry, literally. Was... It's just I don't want to wait here and then come back and then they're stolen. What do you want? Literally, I've just moved in. I just need to take them to the lift. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Is that all right? Could yeah. you just take one each? Thank you, you're a star. Oh, sorry, you've got a bag. Mm -mm. So far, so good. And finally... Uh. Oh, my God! Oh... Oh, Jesus. Oh, my God. Oh, my Do you have, um... Wrecked. Uh, and I don't care about my plates, but my laptop. Oh, do you have my insurance God. for it? Yeah, I do, but the excess is like 200 quid. I can't afford that. That's horrible. Oh, my God, what am I going to do? I start my new job next week. What are you doing? I'm PA with my laptop. Holly rolls out the sob story, and Jazz is there to play the gentleman. No, I've got 20 quid if that helps at all. No, I feel partly responsible for that. Bert McCarg, you miss shite and let me know what happens with it. 
The mark gives Polly a card, yeah, but no cash. cash. Is there nothing you've got, so I just feel really bad. I don't have any cash on me, no, I'm carrying it. Jazz gives no, him another don't, chance don't, to pay up. Don't fret or anything. Look, I'm going to leave you my phone and I'm going to go to the cash point and get you another 40 quid. Get your son to right? Drop me email. No good. The mark is willing to help, but it sounds like he's broke. Have you got any cash on you at all? Oh my gosh, it's just getting worse. Another mark slips through their fingers like a dodgily packed box. Polly and Jazz give it one more go with mark number three. Excuse me, guys, you couldn't do me a massive favour, could you? I'm just moving into the flat up there. I need to get these boxes. Could you help as well? Just to the lift, but I don't want to do it and then come back and the rest be stolen. So would you I give me a hand? Well, you give me a hand. Talk? Yeah, literally. I just don't, don't want to come back and then be gone. Do you know? <sighs> Thank you. This guy's world is about to come crashing down. Thank you. Oh, no, you've just broken my plates. Oh, my lap. Oh, my... Oh my god. What here? Oh my god, it's all smashed. Jesus. <sighs> do you not hold the bottom or something? Oh my god, what am I gonna do? I'm really sorry about that. Honestly, god, that's obviously just been folded up and gone. It's still gonna take it. Well. The mark already feels guilty, so Polly turns up the pressure even more. I've just started a new job as well, and I need to take that next week. I've just moved in. Oh, I'm not worried about the plates, but look at my. <gasps> Oh my god, it's absolutely destroyed. Have you got, um, I can't I believe have this. You got, got insurance for it? <sighs> yeah, I have, but I've got to pay in excess of £200. I can't afford that. I've just moved here from London. This is awful. Oh. Polly leaves Jazz alone to have a man to man chat with the mark. Do you want to like, put, put some money in together? How much? I don't know, like, I don't know, 50 quid each or something towards our excess if it's 200. I just feel I'm, I just feel part responsible. I'm really I feel I know what it's like moving I'm to. Shaking. A, I can't believe this has happened. I'm really sorry about that. Uh, I think we're both we're both going to put some money in for you uh, to help towards the excess. That's news to him. Should I put this in? Or... No, don't worry. I'll sweep that up in a minute. I'm not worried about the plates. It's just my my laptop. This guy's still not flashing the cash. That's just I know exactly what you mean. I just feel a bit like I don't know what it's like moving to a new. I'm going to get some money out for you. Give you. I'll give you 50, and I think he's going to give you 50, and then at least put something towards, I mean, towards that getting would... it repaired. Yeah, you want to just double check? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's the wallet. The Mark feels so guilty for the broken laptop, he hands over £50 to a complete stranger. Thank you. Jazz keeps up his end of the bargain too, though he knows he'll be getting his money back. The Mark heads off, thinking he's done a good deed. In fact, he's just been done. Oh, see you anyway. All right, mate. See you later. Yeah, I dropped a box that had a laptop in that in it and broke it. The guy who was carrying one of the boxes had offered to give her some money because she she'd brought up the conversation of money and he offered to give her some, so then he asked me as well. So I just felt I may as well chip in and you know help her out a bit, but obviously he took for a ride. This is quite a devious little scam, and as you've seen, even a pair of novice hustlers can fool you with it. You do someone a favor, next thing you know, you're reaching for your wallet. Hustlers have always exploited people's good nature to make them feel responsible for damaged goods. This person was a good Samaritan. He was trying to help this lady. An accident happens. He's got no liability whatsoever. He should never part with money under these circumstances. This is a straight ripoff. Earlier today, actress Roxanne Pallett planted dead cockroaches in this watch store, persuading the mark that he may be dealing with a bug infestation. Oh my god, I'm sorry, but I think that's absolutely disgusting. As luck would have it, council boss Paul had an extermination team in the neighbourhood. He offered the mark a free on the spot extermination. Yeah, we'll just do a quick cleanse of in here, take about 15 minutes. 
an offer too good to be true, as he's about to find out in The Smoke Part 2. The hustlers have prepared the shop for the fumigation, but here comes a new junior exterminator. It's Roxanne. The mark has already seen her as a shopper. If he recognises her now, it's game over. Our mask is slipping a little bit. Make sure it's tight. First thing. There's going to be an awful lot of toxic smoke, so Paul has brought a special camera. Uh, heat sensor the camera, so we see anything that's moving. We'll start this up. Mm -hmm. Alex starts the fumigation process. Due to the toxic nature of the fumes, the mark obviously has to wait outside. It's getting awfully smoky in there. In fact, the mark can't see a thing through the large display windows anymore. And that's exactly the point. There is no cockroach infestation. And this isn't toxic gas. In fact, Alex has just been using a portable disco smoke machine. The whole setup has been designed so that the hustlers can ransack the shop whilst the mark waits patiently outside. Paul's infrared camera captures the action. Okay, you guys can start. Kelly, the first start. Roxanne is certainly getting into the spirit of things. Yes, there's a nice pink one here for you. Yeah? Grab it for me. Right. <laughs> you can just go outside, let us rub in. The mark is blissfully unaware that a few feet away, thousands of pounds worth of watches are being thrown into cloth sacks. In fact, the scam is going a little too well. I'm going to need another bag. Seriously, I'm going to need another bag. The bulging sacks are loaded into the box that contain the smoke machine. There's no way we're going to fit all these watches in that big box. Alex will have to make a trip to the van to make space for more. Okay, we're going to go and go with the box twice. Huh? I'm going to go with the box, unload and come back. Okay, okay. I'll wait in here. They mustn't let too much smoke out, or the mark will see what's going on. Oh, ready? Go, go, go. But then, disaster. The box is too heavy, and the lid comes off in Alex's hand, right in front of the mark. Before he has a chance to see what's inside, Alex replaces the lid and carts the booty off into the van. Now there's space for a refill. Time for one more trip into the shop before the smoke thins out. Find yourself. Ready? Close the door, close the door. By now, the hustlers have taken tens of thousands of pounds worth of watches. Now, to get out of here, Alex and Jazz are first. Go, 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 go. Once again, the mark doesn't notice how heavy that box has suddenly become. Time for Roxanne's getaway. She needs to fake a coughing fit. This is a very high-risk moment. The mask is off, and the mark could easily recognise her face from earlier. Can you wait here for five minutes? Over here, pass it. Come on, come on. You're okay. Hold on. Come on. Paul rushes her off for medical help. Before the mark knows what's happened, the hustlers are gone, along with hundreds of watches. Mm. 
Meanwhile, the Mark is still waiting outside for the smoke to clear. He still thinks it's toxic. Ten minutes later, he decides to risk the smoke. Instinctively, he heads straight to the till to check the float is still there. It is, because the hustlers weren't there for the loose change. And then, the reality hits him. The cabinets are open and the shelves are empty. He now realises the store has been robbed. Rotary, Royal London, Calvin Klein. He breaks the bad news to his boss. They've done the whole thing. A lot of stuff is... Yeah, I'm here. It's just a lot of stuff is missing. A lot of stuff is missing. A lot of stuff is missing. A lot of stuff really is missing. Three shelves have been ransacked, is the best way to put it. A few minutes later, the shop owner turns up to find out what's happened. They're both speechless. I literally stood outside. You were outside? Yeah. I thought they were just going to come and spray on the floor or something. No. They said they needed masks and everything. I'm shocked to the point where I don't know what to feel. Just complete befuddlement. I mean, I, I've never actually been in the presence of, you know, a proper robbery like this. This is just, this is completely shocking to me. It comes to about £20,000 in losses. When the room started filling with smoke, I was just, my heart, <laughs> my heart rate increased because I was thinking, I can't see. I'm trying to guess where everything is. I'm trying to get all these watches in a bag and I couldn't see where the other guys were or what they were doing. I was terrified. It was, it, it, yeah. Talk about living on the edge. I can't believe people do this for real. Nobody likes the thought of a cockroach infestation. So an offer of an on-the-spot bug extermination seems too good to refuse. And having Paul there as a council official makes the whole scenario plausible and above board. Never leave a stranger alone with your valuables, whether at home or at work. And if someone claims they're from the council, there's an easy way to check. Call the council. A con man will be long gone before you even pick up the phone. If you want to know more about how the show is made, go to bbc.co.uk slash real hustle.